Hey guys, welcome back to the Watch With Us channel. I am here with a uh, watch industry legend, as I, I like to call him, uh, Craig Hester. How you doing, Craig? I'm good. Great, great to be here. I'm glad we finally get to do our first show together. I've been looking forward to this. Yeah, I mean, look, I've been in the watch industry forever. You've been in the industry forever. And I think we were always on kind of like different parts of the industry. But yeah. I've always known who you are. Same here. Yeah, I mean, I remember, I think we ran into each other and in, whether it be JCK in Vegas or Basel or wherever it may be a few times, but... And we saw each other, remember that dive watch um, event yes. down in New London? Oh, we yeah. Gee, that was a fun day. That was a yeah, fun day. Yeah, I know. That was yeah. good. Yeah, with Chris, that was actually the first time I ever met Chris Vale in person, was it that, uh, at that event? Of course, I've seen him in Hong Kong a couple of times since then, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, that was a nice little event that the dive watch group put together on Facebook, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. That was a fun time. It was right, if I recall correctly, it was like right on the water in yeah. Connecticut, and it was a gorgeous day. So, yeah. very cool. Oh, we have some beautiful beaches here. Yeah, I, I'll tell you, I, I think I often forget how much similar, how similar Connecticut is to Long Island, right? Because I'm mm -hmm. on the south shore of Long Island, and I'm, I'm literally not even a quarter of a mile from the beach here in my office. But when I do go to Connecticut, which was recently very often, you know, that whole coast is, is beach. That's, that's gorgeous. Oh yeah, absolutely. We love living here. It's a great, it's a wonderful place to live. A little, you know, all of us are living uh, a little bit differently right this minute, Oof. obviously with what's going on out there in the world. So it doesn't matter where you live these days, you're seeing probably the same four walls over and over and over again, but um, um, it's crazy. And right? just while I bring that up, just a shout out to everybody to stay safe. And I mentioned it on my Facebook page too. I think all of us should definitely give a salute to all of the, first responders and medical staff out there that are literally putting their lives on the line every day. Absolutely. Make sure that they keep the number of fatalities as low as possible in this terrible situation. So. You know, and, and, and if you, if you actually sit back and comprehend how at risk they're putting themselves and their families, know. you know, it's uh it really fills your heart with, uh, with admiration and appreciation. So, so thank you so much for those of you that are on the front lines you know, from all of us, not just watch with us or everybody. We're everybody. It's, everybody's it's like wartime for these guys. It's like it, wartime. It is. And I, and I, you know, I had a conversation with, uh, you know, I've, I've had a lot of conversations over the last couple of weeks, uh, of phone call and Skype and things. And, you know, anytime I talk to somebody, it's about being in the watch industry and doing videos and trying to sell watches and things like that. It's like party almost feels guilty about doing it. I know. But then on the same side, you kind of want to keep your life hopefully as normal as possible. In addition to that, you have to put food on the table. So, I know. You know. The same thing went through my mind, to be, to be absolutely honest with you, when, when I kept doing you know, our, our regular email campaigns. And there was a point where I said to myself, is this inappropriate now? Right. You know? But yeah. at the same time, I think everybody understands that we have two obligations here. We have the obligation to uh, in the health situation, but we also have an obligation to keep our economy going. And I, I think that every business that can stay in business and can still do some business is actually supporting the overall effort, not not the other way around. I mean, I obviously I wouldn't do a you know, none of us would do a coronavirus special or something like right. that. That would be inappropriate. But at the same time, we, like you said, we should at least try to move forward as normal as we can and keep as much commerce going as we possibly can. And what is otherwise, I mean, come on, you and I both know, even in wartime, commerce has to continue. So it, it uh, does. And I think, I think it's as long as we're doing it with a sense of responsibility, a sense of, right. of sensitivity for what's going on. Yes. I mean, and look, you know, the truth of the matter is if I'm selling some watches, I'm going to go out to the restaurant and do, you know, get that curbside takeout yep. and I'm going to go maybe to, maybe I'll get new tires on my car, which I, I've referenced before because I, I need them. But, um, you know, I'll keep doing what I can do as people are doing what they can do with us. So, so again, I, I agree. Mean, as, I, I mean, anyway, pure, pure admiration. Thank you to everybody to out everybody. there doing it. Absolutely. And let's get back to a little bit of normalcy here with this video. Yeah. And uh, as, as long as everybody knows how much we appreciate them, you know, and hopefully this could be a little bit of a distraction for those people who are watching the video. You know? so. Yeah. So. so you, you and I um, have talked quite a bit over the last few months because you've got, you've got a release going on. You've got, you got something pretty exciting, pretty cool. And before I even utter any words about it, why don't you tell us what's happening, man? Well, let me quickly, I'll tell everybody, for those of you who don't know who I am, I do think probably most of your viewers are probably aware of who we are because we probably have a similar 
audience in a lot of ways, but nevertheless, yeah. um, I am, my name is Craig Hester. I am the president of what is known as the Dayton Watch Group, which sounds a lot more impressive than it really is. Um, it's just, a, we're a small family owned operation. Uh, my wife is actually my business partner. We have two other employees. And of course, we have some independent contractors, but we're a pretty small operation here in Connecticut. We're people who love watches. Uh, Abe Weiss, my number two, is about as big of a watch geek as you can possibly have on the planet. Abe, he surpasses me. I make no pretense. Um, Abe has forgotten more about watches than I know. Um, and uh, we've been in business for now about 16 years. Uh, we actually started out uh, by purchasing a website, which originally was called Russia to All, and now we've changed that. It's R2A Watches. Um, and about Oh, five years ago, we decided that, I mean, well, let me back up. We import watches from Eastern Europe and Russia. We're really the only company uh, in North America that focuses on that. I mean, we do have some other brands from different parts of the world. But, you know, when you look at Vostok Europe out of Lithuania, there's Stramansky out of Russia. You've got Sikolia out of Georgia. That's the country, not the state. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of become our niche. So five years ago-ish, we decided we wanted to start our own brand. I wanted to take what we had learned from uh, working with other brands, and I will absolutely give 100% uh, credit to Igor Zabowski and Valentin Veloko and, and uh, Ziad Sikolia for the things that I learned from them that gave me a leg up when I started that probably most people don't have because I already had a pretty good feel for how watches were built and how you sourced components and so forth. That you know, a lot of micro brands when they first start, they're just a babe in the woods trying to figure out yeah. how the heck do I even start this. So we had a leg up because of that. And, and um, our first watch now came out about three years ago was the Trans-Siberian, which was the pocket watch for the wrist. And then we followed that with what has been, not surprisingly, our most successful watch to date, which was the Berlin Wall watch that has actual pieces of the Berlin Wall and the crown. And I could do a whole show with you about that and won't. Um, that's, yeah. I love that watch and it's done phenomenally. I'm amazed we still have a handful in stock, which will probably, those are going to be on Touch Modern soon, and probably move out the rest of those. But what we're talking about today is the Iron Wolf, which is a watch that, well, the idea came many, many years ago. Um, as you know, I'm really connected to Lithuania at this point. I mean, you know, Igor Zavovsky, the managing director of Vostok Europe, uh, we've been doing business with them since basically Vostok Europe started. We were their third distributor in the world. Right. Uh, when Vostok Europe first started, I saw, this sounds, I don't mean to sound, I hate these kind of things when people say this, but I saw the potential in Vostok Europe from the very beginning. I, I don't want to sound like I feel like I was some oracle or something. I could have no. easily been wrong, but I looked at what he was doing. I saw that he was building watches in-house. I saw his passion for it. I saw that he understood marketing uh, as opposed to a lot of the people in that part of the world because they didn't grow up marketing like we did. Right. Um, and I knew that there was something there. I mean, I wish I had three more Vostok Europe's. It's such an amazing brand. And it just, well, that's, you know. That's really what I know you personally for is because, I mean, to me, it's probably, obviously, it's, you're probably your most successful selling brand. Of and course. It's just whenever I think of, of, you know, that Eastern European and Russian kind of watch. And, and I think of Vostok and, and that's, you were the face of Vostok in my opinion, right? Yeah. So, yeah. And, uh, we're definitely, I mean, in, in this part of the world, and actually even it's funny because on a regular basis, people buy from other distributors, which I'm fine with. I want Vostok, as they say, a rising tide floats all boats. I want Vostok Europe to do well. And, you know, they'll be like, I saw your video on YouTube and I bought it in Poland or I bought it. And great. You know, the more right. that, that we build the brand is better for everybody. So, I was in Lithuania with uh, Tim Temple, uh, who at the time was still with, uh, I think at that time it was still Shop NBC. Let's see, it's been, it's been Value Vision, Shop NBC, <laughs> Shop HQ, Evine, and now it's Shop HQ again. So whichever one, you know, six to five, right. I pick them what their name will be tomorrow. Yeah, um, yeah, Tim, Tim's that legend, man. Tim's, Tim's the guy that everybody would watch on, uh, on TV at, you know, all he, hours of the night and buy and watch. He started it all, you know. He's an amazing really, guy. <laughs> he really was the one who started the big, you know, the, anyway. Yeah. So I was there and I was there with Gary Gervanis, who's the publisher of International Watch and About Time. Yeah, and, very good mutual uh, friend. He's a great guy. Yeah. And so we were, uh, Igor took us on the historical tour of Vilnius and the story of the Iron Wolf came up, not surprisingly. There's a big statue of Gediminis right there in the town square, you know, and, and the story of the Iron Wolf, which I will briefly tell you is basically yeah. it's the story of the founding of Lithuania. Uh, Gediminis, uh, who became the ruler of Lithuania. The, the story goes, he stopped by the Vilna River. He um, 
had had a long day of hunting. He was tired. He took a nap on a hill. And while he took that nap, he had this dream where he saw an iron wolf on a hill and it was baying with the strength of a hundred wolves. And he went to his uh, priest, which at that time would of course been a pagan priest. And he said, so can you interpret this dream for me that I had of this iron wolf? And the priest said, this means that you will build a great city here at the Vilna River. It will be known as Vilnius. You will become the great ruler of the, of the great Lithuanian lands. And that's the shortest version of that story. <laughs> um, and so I, I, the second I heard that, I knew, wow, this is such a great story. And, and we need to make a watch out of it. And Igor actually was not interested in following the Iron Wolf. I think in some ways, similarly to how like, we feel kind of funky if we just like put a, a, an eagle on a watch and call it an American watch or something. It, it, right. It's kind of not, you know, it would almost feel uh, uh, kind of uh, hokey for them in a way because it's so ingrained in their culture that they don't see it the way we do from the outside. Sure. Um, so he, he eschewed that and went to other things that he's been uh, working on. And, and I said, well, if you're not going to, if you're not going to pursue it, I want to pursue that story. And he said, fine, you know, if you want to pursue it. So we developed our first military watch, which is the Iron Wolf. Um, again, the inspiration is uh, the, uh, the story of the Iron Wolf, which is um, what I just told you. And then we tied it to also the, uh, there's a military vehicle that was just recently commissioned within the past few years and just started being used uh, from a German company. They built uh, the infantry fighting vehicle for Lithuania's NATO ground forces Europe. And that infantry fighting vehicle is known as the Wolf because, you know, that, that symbol just, I, actually it's a good comparison, like the bald eagle. Yeah. It's so integrated in our culture. Um, the Iron Wolf is integrated in their culture. It's everywhere. Right. Um, so we contacted the people building the IFV and became their official watch. So we're the official timekeeper of the infantry fighting vehicle of the uh, Lithuanian NATO ground forces. There are six executions in the watch. I have, I have five of them here. One of them we ended up not building a prototype, but decided to go ahead and build it later. Um, but before I go into all that, just a little bit more overview. So where we are right now, and part of why we're doing this show, is we're doing a contest. Um, and it, you can go to r2awatches.com, and there's a link there. I'm sure you'll have a link in the description and all those kinds of things that yep. we normally do. Um, and you can sign up to win a first of the series. So we're actually going to be giving away a number one. And you'll be able to pick whichever one you like from the six different ones because you'll be the first person, whoever wins this contest will be the first person to have a number one uh, from the Iron Wolf collection. So if you if you prefer quartz, you, you can pick the quartz. If you prefer automatic, you can pick the automatic, depending on what dial you like. Um, so that's going on now. And it's also one of those contests, too, where you'll get a link of your own. And the more you share that and get other people to sign up, the more entries you get. Oh, so that's fantastic. Yeah. So for every, I think for every entry you get somebody else, you'll get like three. Um, so you've got a way to really build up your entries. So that will happen right after the release, which is about six weeks out at this point. And then we are also still on Indiegogo. Um, we went, we were, we did fund on Kickstarter and then we moved over to the in demand part on, on Indiegogo. So you can still go there. And we did add as a number of people requested in the beginning, we had it where the only thing you could get was the full kit, which I'll explain in just a minute. But we did add an option for those who were, and they were asking for a, a way to get into the watch without having to go the full 389 or whatever it is we've got on there. So we did do a bracelet only version for 249. So, okay. um, I'm, I'm, if you look, if anybody's seeing my face turn this way, I'm looking at the, the campaign I'm here as we talk. Campaign. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, that is, so the, I didn't even mention the brand name. The brand name is Pramzius. I guess I should talk about that. Pramzius, the name we came up with, we decided when we got into this that, um, you know, there's a lot of directions we could have gone. We're based in the United States. So we could have done something with a U.S. theme, uh, you know, similarly to how successful the you know, Minuteman has been, uh, right. you know. Um, but we felt like, like you said, you said it perfectly. I'm the guy that people associate with Eastern European watches and with Vostok Europe. So we felt like, hey, that's where our bread and butter is. 
that's what people associate. So we stayed with that theme. So Pramzius actually is the name uh, for the Baltic god of time. The, the Baltic states actually had a pantheon of gods, just like the Greeks and the Romans. Right. They, had, they had a god of thunder. They had a god of war. They had uh, Zeus. I forget what name Zeus had in there, but it was or, or a, uh, you know, a top god. And Pramzius uh, is actually was their god of time, similar to Kronos. And uh, it's actually spelled with two A's, but we took one of the A's out because I felt like people <laughs> didn't have a hard enough time pronouncing it as it was. And getting to um, the website, right? So that really fit the theme. I stumbled upon this. I had been searching around. I tell you, naming a watch brand is a oh. challenge. Naming, naming anything, <laughs> anything in this day and age is a challenge, yeah. right? Because you yeah, have to check, so and see, you check and see if uh, the website's available. You have to check and see if when you do a Google search, how, what are you competing against? You know? Right. It's, and you want to check the test database and make sure somebody else hasn't already trademarked it. I mean, right. one thing about this one, my trademark attorney told me that was, she said she had a first. Um, not only was there, was there no competition in the watch category, there was literally no one ever anywhere that had the name Pramzia. So at least <laughs> that's we were perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> she's like, that's exactly what you want. Um, yeah. And we changed, that's another thing too, when we changed the spelling, it's, um, it's harder to trademark a real a name of something that's a real name. Right. You almost want to change it. The, the, in trademark, they call it, it's kind of like Xerox is the perfect example. They call it arbitrary and capricious. You want it to just be this thing that nobody else would necessarily associate with anything right. until you make the association. But now right. I mean, Xerox, it wasn't a word until, you know, and now yeah. it's a word. Household I mean, name. I mean, look yeah. at look at Rolex. I mean, you know, rumor has it that it was named Rolex because it was easy to spell and easy to say in almost any language. Right. But it didn't have a pre-existing, you know, it didn't exist before that. No, it know? was a so, created word. And, and Pramzius is a real thing, but we didn't change the name. So. No, I like that. I like that. And, and again, I mean, just to feed off off of your history with the with with the Baltic states and with the you know Eastern Europe, Eastern Europe. When I look at whether it be Vostok or any of the other brands or Pramzius, I look at these words and I almost want to go and Google what they are because oh, I, I know that what you're doing with all of your projects, they, they seem to have a real deep rooted uh, story behind them. And I, I am a total story geek when it comes to watches. I, right. I believe that the story is, is, should be the start for everything. Sure. Um, my phrase that I've always said about Vostok Europe, and I hope it holds true for, for Pramzius, is the story gets you, gets you in the door, gets you to buy, you get hooked by the story, and the quality will keep you coming back. Well, I was going to just add that because, you know, I could fall in love with a watch or a, you know, a model based on the story behind it. But I can also just say, you know what, the story doesn't mean anything to me personally. However, I love the watch. So right, you're going right. to have you're going to be able to play both sides of that. You know, I mean, you know, Definitely. look, I, my, my Omega Speedmaster, I love the history of the Speedmaster and I love the watch that has both, but there are other watches I have, you know, that I just either love the watch or love the story. So and my, of course my goal is to try and nail both every time. Sometimes of course. we will, and sometimes we won't. No, but, no yeah. Um, sometimes you're going to reach certain people's heartstrings and sometimes you're not, but at the end of the day, if they love your watch, you know, that's, that's what it's about. Yeah, and so we're, and we try to make sure, I don't have this as a hard and fast rule, but we want the inspirations to come from one of the nine countries that touch the Baltic states. Our next watch is a, a little, this is after the Iron Wolf, there's a little bit of a stretch on that. We're actually going to be the official watch, it's going to be called the Gauge Master, the official watch of the VVT Train Museum in uh, Senselpiece, uh, Switzerland, which uh, we're actually going to have pieces of the Stripped out metal from 1800s locomotives. There's going to be a ring inside the watch, the you know, visible ring from that. Um, and so the Swiss connection. But the way we made sure that we stayed with the Baltic connection, oddly enough, their flagship train, which was the one we we use the gauge to use as our inspiration for the dial, uh, is a German train, and Germany touches the Baltic. So I try to keep that connection the best I can. Um, you know, it, it's hard to find those stories and, and get something that you really think is going to resonate. And, and to be different these days is not easy. There's a lot, you know, the micro brand watch world has opened up a lot of creativity that I don't think was there before. Yes. Um, you know, watch brands just putting out the next pie plate. That's what Tim and I call them. You know, just that standard circular watch that everybody seems to produce. Um, 
you know, micro brands are doing some creative stuff. I mean, look at what Talker's doing, you know, look at what uh, Chris is doing. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of innovative rec, what rec is doing. And I make no pretense, the train watch, we were partially inspired by what rec is doing. Instead of doing it with cars, we're doing it with trains. I mean, there's, you know, I love, I love everything that you just mentioned, Talker, rec. I mean, the thing, the thing that, you know, for those who don't know, which I think a lot of you do is, is I spent 18, 17 years in the Tag Heuer's, Omegas, Rolexes, and Audemars of the world. That's what I did. And when I went off my own, I sold most of my collection to fund my business, which was not originally Watch Gauge. It was a different business. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I sold all of that stuff and raised the money to start the business. And um, I still had the passion to buy watches. However, I couldn't go and spend thousands. And I started buying micro brands and I started realizing that there's a, a, an enormous amount of fun and creativity and quality in micro brands, which ultimately led to starting watch gauge, right? Because mm -hmm. I felt like there was a need for an online representation of, a, of somewhere to, to go and shop micro brands that were vetted. And, uh, and I fell in love with micro brands and don't get me wrong. I still love the high end oh, stuff. Of course. But I mean, yeah, and no, and nobody would call Vostok Europe a micro brand today. Of I course, mean, they're, you know they're not a call brand. I mean, they're, they're not at the level of a Seiko or a Citizens, but they're you know, but they're what I actually refer to as a boutique brand. I was just going to say the same word. Yeah, and you know, so of course, and I still love them, but but I will say this: Vostok Europe has maintained a lot of the things that you and I like in micro brand watches in that it, it they start with the story first build the watch around the story they take innovative risks I mean look at the stand-up tritium tubes the other things they've done um, so no I'm with you I totally I still love the call brands I still but have some in my collection I am um, but, but it seems I to be a lot more fun being in the micro space. Well, that's what I was going to say. I think that the most innovative stuff that's, and I'm not necessarily talking about us. I mean, I like to think, I hope people think we're being innovative and different, but I do think looking at the other people in, in, that are doing what they're doing in the micro brand world, that the most innovative things that are happening until you get to like the Uworks and the Devon Treads and the, Zor the Nord Zeit machines where these guys are, and, oh, and I can't, I can't not mention Constantine Chaikin with the Joker. Oh. See, those guys have, one. yeah, those guys have a skill set I'll never have. I'm not a mechanical engineer by, you know, I'm a marketer, I'm a writer. Yeah. I like to tell the story. I do enjoy designing the watches and I've learned a lot in doing that, but I could never do like what Constantine Chenkin does or Uruk does where they take these things and they tear it down into its components and recreate it. Like that one that, that Constantine has where the, it has the, 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 the horse, uh, film on it and yeah. you can actually make the horse film run that original first one where the guy proved that their feet come off the ground right you know so that's a whole other level but if you're talking about affordable because all of those are extremely expensive watches yeah. as well if you're talking about affordable approachable innovative different special watches it's happening in the micro brand watch world today no right. question about it in my mind yeah yeah i agree i agree so you know, I, to me, I, I just think it's really super enjoyable to be in this, in this industry um, where we're not dealing with people's health finances, things like that. And we, we're dealing with a lot of fun products. I think what you're doing is awesome. So well, I appreciate what's, it. What's, the, what's the delivery date on, on the it should be, Iron should Wolves? Be early. Ballpark. Early May. Early May. All right. So it's right around the corner. It's right around the corner. And let me quickly, I'll show everybody the well, different styles. Are and you don't even have to hold them up. I'll, um, I'll, I'll edit in good shots of them from you I guys. Figured, but it never hurts. Yeah, yeah, you can if you want. So, I'll, I'll overdub it. <laughs> yeah. So we've got, um, I do that with Tim. He sometimes he likes it. Sometimes he doesn't. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so there are six executions. Um, three in courts with the 6S series movement. That's the, that's the, uh, Quartz movement from Miyota that has the mechanical parts in it. So it yeah. actually, when you, when you activate the chronograph, it sweeps. Right. Um, I really like that movement. Vostok Europe uses it a lot. It's a great movement. And then the other one was the, uh, the eight series with the open heart from uh, Miyota, which they're actually not making anymore. Um, we, we, were, we actually got in on the last orders that you could get for that movement. Um, that said, nobody needs to worry, obviously. It's Miyota. There's going to be parts for repair yeah. from now until Methuselah comes back. Yeah. Um, but 
so there are three in the courts and there are three in the open heart. They all have the same dial. And I did a dial open heart, a dial quartz, a dial open heart, a dial quartz. There is a, a full loom option in both. There is a mother of pearl option in both. And then there is a carbon fiber option in both. Now, one of the questions I get asked a lot is, well, Craig, you know, mother of pearl and carbon fiber, weren't they like trendy a while back and they're not so much now? My answer to that is I don't care. <laughs> I like mother of pearl and I like carbon fiber. And I have a little bit of a luxury that a lot of micro brands don't necessarily have. Don't get me wrong. I'm not independently wealthy. But because of the fact that we do have the distributorship and we do have R2A watches and we have other pillars of the business, I don't depend on this to put food on my table. Right. So I get to be a little bit more, do what That's I true. like, you know, yeah. a little bit more. And I still love uh, Mother of Pearl dials. I like juxtaposing things that are unexpected together. Who expects a Mother of Pearl dial in a true military watch, you know? Um, and I've always liked carbon fiber. I don't really care what the trends are. I care what I like and what it right. and what I think my, you know, I've learned after, you know, 16 years with the same customer base, I got a pretty good feel for what they like, yeah. you know, and what they're going to respond to. And they like different and they like strange juxtapositions. They like to be able to go, look at this military watch that's, you know, mother of pearl. Yeah, so. and you know, and and I mean, I would consider that a black mother of pearl, right? I mean, that's it's that's called what smoke. I'm, is is the is the one? Yeah, but it's it's like a masculine mother of pearl versus, yes. let's say, a pinkish or, or oh, white. Would, yes. So it's Agreed. it's it's very very cool. Um, you know, obviously the full loom is pretty awesome. Um, I love a full loom dial. Man. Yeah, I do too. I don't think there's enough of them out there, but I kind of like that because when they do come out, they are special. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is is. As far as carbon fiber is concerned, I don't think that can or cannot be trendy. I think, you know, I think of I think of race cars, I think of dirt bikes, I think of all these, you know, uh, EDC stuff like knives, and you know, to me, carbon fiber is like the ultimate like guy material, right? Like, it's ultra light, it's ultra strong, and it's used in a lot of crap that guys like. So I yeah. think it's I think I think it works for sure. Um, very cool. And so with the giveaway. Tell uh, where everybody's going to go to R2A. R2A watches. There's a there's a there's a landing page there. I'm sure there'll be a link in the description. Yeah. You can sign up and again, be sure and get that link for yourself that right. you can share on social media because the more you share it and you get other people to sign up, the, the more, more you get. Entries you get. Yeah. So it, I think that's brilliant. That's that's not it. something that we've experienced in our giveaways just yet. Is uh, you know, so, so, you know, viewer A, can I end up with dozens of entries if yes. they, when they enter, they grab that link that's unique to them and that's mm -hmm. what they share, whether it be on Facebook, Instagram, or wherever else they can share it, send it out to their uh, friends and family. And, yep. uh, and, and the and system cool. knows that that's their link. So if the next person signs up from that link, they get an additional set. Of, I think it's three entries per every additional don't quote me on that but there's you get uh, you get multiples for getting new people yeah no it's awesome and because you and i kind of just just kind of put this together really sort <laughs> yeah. of quickly we did um, did we decide on how like when the drawing's going to be and uh how this i was going to do it not long after the watches come in basically my uh what i planned on is i want to i want to fulfill the the oldest pre-orders first because right, those people deserve to get the watch first Ooh, yeah, you know, and, and, and let them get it and let a few you know wrist shots be out there on the web so that everybody knows the watches are out and probably about two weeks after they come in and we get everybody the first people fulfilled then i'll do the drawing good um, all right and then so what we'll do is maybe um we'll, we'll let all of our viewers know uh, both on youtube instagram and facebook same here and, um, you know, we'll let them know when the drawing is. And of course, uh, you know, whether, if it's going to be live, we'll direct them to where it's going to be live. If it's, if it's recorded, we'll, if it's, yeah, if, we're, if it's recorded, we'll direct them to the video and we'll, we'll get it going. So that's awesome. We really appreciate the fact that you're donating to a giveaway for the channel. We truly hope, I mean, you, you've already hit your goal. You're, these are in production, yeah. so it's not like we're scrambling to, uh, but we hope that this is as successful as humanly possible. And uh, I'll tell you, I love, I love the brand. I love the Thank stories you. behind the brand. I think I mentioned it before, but to me, it's really, it's, it's exciting because I'm like, I don't want to say I'm a history buff, but I love history. Uh, my wife's a history teacher, so it's just something wow. that I enjoy. 
And when we, when you, like I said before, you have a new model, you have a new brand, you have something, you know, if your name's attached to it, Craig, I'm always kind of like, well, that's got to be about something pretty cool. So <laughs> it, it's exciting. It's exciting. Well, I so, really appreciate that. Well, and yeah, I man. enjoy, I enjoy the exploration myself. I, I said to Tim on more than one occasion, you know, like when we did the Berlin Wall, I went to Berlin and I felt like I had an obligation to do that. It's almost like a soldier, yeah. you know? And I learned so much about the Berlin Wall and yeah. that story, things I didn't know, because, you know, most of us have gotten the education about the Berlin Wall that comes from the little bit it's brought up in maybe a class in college, and you, and, and you see the retrospectives when it was the 25th anniversary or whatever. Right. I learned so much about that, and that is a reward of building the watch that's intangible that you can't put a, you can't put a price tag on. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. So uh, aside from r2awatches.com, where else, uh, where else can our viewers follow you, find you? Well, we're on YouTube, and it's R2, it is R2A Watches as well on YouTube, awesome. and we do regular shows on there. In fact, I will post this on there as well, so everybody, Great. so we have the more the merrier. Yeah. Um, we love doing, uh, uh, we, we love doing co things with people. There's, what do they call it on? Collaborations? Collab. <laughs> that collab. Yeah. My kids are always, I'm going to collab with somebody. I'm like, <laughs> Um, and I guess, and we, we, you know, how we call it swag. Yeah. They call it merch. Yeah. They think we sound stupid when we say swag. swag. Right. Like every, every generation has their own words that they, they think they're adults sound stupid. Yeah. At least, at least we're past the groovy stage, right? We were, we were uh, cool once, man. We were we cool were, once. You know, that is, that is the one word, cool, that Hasn't seems changed. to, seems to transcend every generation. Yeah. You know, there's, this, there's some of the words, like if you were to say groovy, you really yes. date yourself. But or cool, rad. Cool is always cool. Cool is cool, man. So, yeah. So, uh, YouTube, uh, we have the Facebook group, Vostok Europe Timepieces, um, which is a private group that anybody can join. I hope you're, are you a member? I'm you pretty sure be. I am, yeah. I think you are, yeah. And um, and there is a Pramzius.com. Uh, that is really more just kind of a show place. I mean, you can technically order there, but that's really just to show the watches. Where we really sell is at, is at R2AWatches.com. But right now, what's important is Indigo. Uh, because you cannot pre the, the pre-order price, which was lower, which our, our, our early adapters, our own customers, right. for want a better way of putting it, who, who signed up right away, they got the best price as they should. Sure. Uh, that price is gone once we went to Kickstarter. So we were on Kickstarter, Kickstarter's over, and now it's on Indiegogo. So you can't pre-order with us with a discount on our two way watches. If you want to get, what is basically the Kickstarter price, which is the second best price anybody could get. Um, you need to do it on Indiegogo. Okay, so for, for the viewers, all of these links will be down below. If you want to buy one, if you want to pre-order one now, uh, mm -hmm. the wait is, is not that very long. And you go to that Indiegogo link down in the description. Yep. So uh, awesome, man. Well, all right. you, really good to see you again. Same here. You know, oh, where I, I didn't mention real quick, the, it, it is a full kit. So oh, yeah. they get they get the bracelet. Now this is unless you and this is unless you pick obviously the bracelet only, which that's what it's called. So that's pretty clear. But yeah. there's a bracelet. We did a custom. I'm wearing it. A custom strap with uh, Constantine Hussar, which normally would be about a hundred dollar strap. Yeah, it's a cool um, strap that we that, that 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 it comes with, and it will come with a Zulu. Uh, mm -hmm. And it comes in this really great packaging. It's a uh, a two watch holder. We actually sourced, we spent a lot of time sourcing the right packaging for this. We're really excited with what we came up with for the packaging. So you will get a full kit. And that, by the way, that I, I've, I've learned full kit is a term that came about because of watch gang. I guess that's that, that, that they, they have actually created, Abe and I were talking about this the other day, they created some language that didn't exist before, like half kit, full kit, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. I'll tell you, they, they're, they're, they're another ones rocking and rolling out there in California, man. They're, uh, they're doing some you know, innovative stuff. Say whatever you will. They have brought a lot of young guys into watches that were not into watches before. And we needed that. We needed an infusion of young blood. Oh, because, yeah. You know, we were getting to where anybody we were selling to was, was you know, north of 40. Yeah. And they brought in some young guys. So I, you can, whatever you got to say about them, you cannot say that they did not rejuvenate the, the watch industry in a lot of ways. I, you know, I've, I've been saying not, not just about watch gang, just about, you know, anytime somebody comes in and does something different, anytime somebody comes in and threatens the established way of doing yeah. things in the watch industry, 
there's all these detractors. There's all these people, you know, oh, this, they suck because of this, blah, 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 whatever it may be. It's always naysayers. Always. And, you know, to me, you know, I always look at it as like, God bless you guys. You're doing something different. You're bringing it in. May not be something I love or don't. And, I, and with them, I like, you know, I think what they're doing is fantastic. Um, but in general, just whether I like the model or not with anything, if they're doing things that are in, in enhancing the overall experience of the watch world, watch industry, I'm cool with it. I mean, I know I, I've got friends who are, you know, run traditional authorized dealers of all the mainstream full brands, you know, and um, they're all, all micro brand, all micro brand. You know what? They're, it's almost like they're threatened by it. Not what, not that they are, but you know what I mean? It's just, it's not their way of doing things. So they're, they're going to talk. Well, about I, I don't know who you're talking about, but I do know sometimes you get the snob that comes along and, 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 you know, fine. If that, if that's how you feel, I mean, you know, then this isn't for you. Right. You know, this yeah. is for the guys who are collectors. Look, we have a little bit of everything I've got. We, you and I both probably, I'm sure you do as well as I do, have wealthy customers who own every call brand you can imagine. And yep. they're bored with that. And so they, they found you, they found me, they found the micro brands just because they were looking for something different. Yep. And then you've got the guys who, a Patek Philippe is an aspiration watch that they may never be able to own, right. but they can have a lot of fun with uh, smaller, either micro or, or boutique brands that, you know, you can buy, you know, 40 of our watches for what you're going to pay for one Patek Philippe. And so I, it, it's, it's just about what, where do you fit in and what fits in for you? And I think everybody's got their own fit, their own story, yeah. their own. And, yeah. and that's and why there's I, a big enough, there's a big enough pie out there for everyone. Yeah. And, and as long as to me, let's all do this and have fun. And don't, you know, but everybody, everybody just has to have a good time with it. And uh, that's it, man. So Listen, again, right. thank you so much. Awesome. I've had a fun time. Hello. Hey, we're honored to have you, man. Uh, it's a great, been a great conversation. I love talking about this kind of stuff. Absolutely. And I'm sure we'll do it again. I mean, to me, this is this is what I love more than almost anything in the industry. It's just well, and we can flip flop it and I'll have you on our show sometime, too. And I'm ready, brother. All right. All right, man. So thank you so much. Thank you. Everybody watching, make sure you go check out the Indiegogo. Uh, follow them on all their social, the Pramsius. Uh, the new Iron Wolf is is coming very Six soon. Six weeks out. All right. And don't forget, uh, go over to R2A, uh, r2awatches.com, enter for the drawing, and do not forget, grab that link, copy that link, and paste it into all of your social media so you get additional entries to win the first in a series of the Iron Wolf. So uh, thanks again, guys. Thanks for always Thank watching you. the Watch With Us channel. Craig, we'll talk to you absolutely very soon, my friend. Good absolutely, luck. Absolutely, man. It's been all great. Right, Take care. Keep watching.